The Merman version of the Bell theorem works like this, and it requires no quantum mechanics. It's simply a result, and these results can be used to rule out the possibility that the particles have some kind of localized structure that one doesn't depend on the other, such that you could figure out what those properties are all by itself without reference to anything else. Here's the idea of the setup. You have a machine in the middle that sends particles out with a button on it, and when you press it, a particle goes to the left and a particle goes to the right. And then you have two detectors, and the detectors have an indicator that you can you set to either one, two, or three on, the, on, the, on one side, and one, two, or three on the other. You can set any combination of those, one, one, two, two, three, three, or one, two, two, three, one, three, three, one, and so on. When you press the button and a particle goes to each, so each detector, one and only one light will light up on each of these receivers. Either the red light will light up on one of the receivers, or the green light will light up. So you get a red light or a green light on the left and a red light or green light on the right, but you never get a failure to light on one side or the other, and you never get both lights lighting up on one side or the other. In other words, for each run of the experiment, each press of the button, a particle going each to one of the detectors, you could summarize the results as being the place that the pointer is, one, two, or three, so you could summarize that by saying one, two would mean one on the left, two on the right, and what the lights do. So if the left light lights up red and the right light lights up green, you could summarize a particular run of the experiment as being, say, one, two, red, green. Okay? That's what we do. When we do this run over and over again, we could set the detectors to 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 2, or 3, 3. And we just press the button and see what we get. And then we write down what it is. 1, 1, red, red, 2, 2, green, green, etc. Corresponding to the runs of the experiment. This experiment will have a certain set of results, and we'll talk about them. There'll be a result A and a result B. And we'll see that the combination of these results rules out the possibility that the particle contains all the information needed to tell you whether the red light will go or the green light will go, depending only on that receiver's position, one, two, or three. We will rule out the localized explanation. That's the goal of this experiment. Continuing our discussion of Bell's theorem, as Merman summarizes it and simplifies it down to its essence, you have the following situation. You hit the switch, and a particle goes left and a particle goes right. There are two kinds of results, result A and result B. The broad strategy we're going to follow is to show that if we assume what we need to assume to make result A true, we will not be able to make result B true. That is to say, if we assume that the particles contain all the information localized in their own little vicinities of what color you'll get if you set the detector to a 1 or a 2 or a 3, then we can satisfy the first of our results, result A, but we will be unable to satisfy the second result, B, which is also experimentally observed. In other words, if we try to assume that particles have definite values, like definite position and momentum, or definite other values that are incompatible in quantum mechanics, we will come to a contradiction with experiment. This isn't a matter of interpretation. This is a matter of experimental contradiction. It simply is not going to be compatible with the experimental results that can be gotten in the world to assume that particles really have such things as momentum and position at the same time. Okay, let's go. Result A says that when the settings on the two detectors are the same, say 1-1 one, one, or 2-2 two, two, or 3-3, three, three, then we will always get two red lights or two green lights, RR or GG. We will never get red-green or green-red. So how are we going to guarantee that? Well, it's actually pretty clear. We can say that the particle is coded in some way, 
like RGR. If we assume the particle is coded RGR, that means that when we set the detector to 1, we get red. When we set the detector to 2, we get green. And when we set the detector to 3, we get red. Or you could have GGG. Then no matter where you set it, you'd get green. If you set it to um, GRG, then you'd get green when you set it to 1, red when you set it to 2, and green when you set it to 3. If we do that, and the particles are coded in the same way, going right or left, we will always get red, red, or green, green. We'll never get red, green, or green, red. Because if they're coded the same way, then if I set 1, 1, I'll get red, red. If I set it to 2, I might get green, green. If I set it to 3, I might get red, red, if an RGR particle went to the left and went to the right. But here's the problem. Assuming that the particles are locally coded this way, that they actually have a fixed value of what, of what color they'll produce for a given setting, one, two, or three, we will come into contradiction with result B. Result B says that when the settings are different, like one, two, or two, three, or one, three, or three, one, when the settings on the two detectors are different, a quarter of the time, we'll get red, red, or green, green, and we'll get red, green, or green, red, three quarters of the time. We're going to now reason to show that result B is incompatible with having coded values of the particles, with having them be locally fixed such that it's determined in advance what color will go off if the detector is set to a 1, what color you'll get if it's set to a 2, and what color you'll get if it's set to a 3. This is our strategy. We had to assume local coding to get result A, but when we try to get result B with that same idea of local coding, we'll find out we're sunk. Now, there are two possible ways of coding either a code with two of one color and one of the other, or three of the same. Those are your only choices. We either have something like red, red, green, or red, green, red, or we have something like red, 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 or green, green, green. If we have two of one color, let's take as an example red, red, green, then we get color results red, green, or green, red for one, three, 2, 3, 3, 1, or 3, 2. Those settings produce different colors. We get red, red, or green, green, only if we pick the settings on the detectors of 1, 2, or 2, 1. So we get the same color one third of the time and different colors two thirds of the time. If the instructions are on the coded particles are red, 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 or green, 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 then of course, by definition, we never get different colors. Because no matter where I set the two needles on the two detectors for an RRR particle in both directions, all I get is red, red. And if I send green, green, green in opposite directions, then no matter where I set my counters, I get green, green. So I never get cross colors. So we get the same color 100% of the time in the case of red, 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 or green, green, green. Now combining these two results means that any experiment that sends the same color particles right and left will always give the same color at least a third of the time, right? Because we got the same color a third of the time if there was two of one and one of the other, and all of the time if the code was red, 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 or green, green, green. But this violates the experimental result B, which said that we get the same color only one quarter of the time. So the experimental result says we get the same color a quarter of the time, but by sending oppositely coded particles 
right and left, we know we will get the same color at least a third of the time. What went wrong? It was the assumption that we can code in advance.